In this video, we're going to look at the, th the third of the three common amplifier configurations, the common drain, or what is sometimes also referred to as the source follower. We're going to find that this configuration has the very nice characteristic of having a large input impedance, a large input resistance. Once again, the signal is going to be applied directly to the drain, but it also has a small output resistance. So it provides the opportunity or provides the characteristic of, of buffering the amplifier from any following stages that might require um, current gain that might have small output or small input resistances. Um, we're going to find also that the common drain amplifier doesn't have much gain. In fact, under best circumstances, it's got about a unity gain. So no, we're not looking for voltage gain here, but we are looking for this resistance buffering or this resistance matching um, effect. We're well familiar with the loading effect when connecting a relatively small um, input resistance to a source that's got a large output resistance. We end up with a voltage division here that, where this is what, what we're seeing here in this example is we've got a one kilo ohm resistance as our load resistor or the input to the next stage. But the output of the previous stage, in this case, the um, internal resistance of the signal is huge. So that when the relatively small resistance here starts to call for current, small amounts of current cause large voltage drops across this large resistor, and any signal strength that we had is lost across the input resistance. And not the input resistance, across the, uh, the internal resistance of the source. We've addressed this problem in the lab using a voltage follower or a buffer op amp. We're now going to see that the common drain amplifier has similar characteristics. Again, a large input resistance and a small output resistance and can be used to provide this buffering operation. Here's the common drain configuration. Once again, the signal is attached or connected directly to the gate, so the input resistance is infinite. And the drain is tied to ground. The output then is taken from the source, thus the name source follower. V out is just the source voltage. Once again, we're going to use the T, um, the T uh, small signal model because as our output is connected or taken from the source, then it brings the load resistance in series with the resistance seen looking into the source, that 1 over G sub M resistance. Now, in general, R0, the early effect resistance, goes here. But once again, we're going to neglect it just to simplify the, uh, the calculations. We can determine the output resistance coming on over here. The output resistance is just the resistance seen looking into the source when the input source or the signal is deactivated. With the source deactivated, this point then is ground, and the output resistance is 1 over G sub M. So R out equals 1 over G sub M. G sub M a relatively large value. 1 over G sub M is a relatively small value. So the output resistance of the common drain has a small, the output resistance of the common drain is a small value. And just compare that to R out for the common source where R out there was the parallel combination of R sub D with R out. Significantly, significant improvement in the output resistance, which again is the reason, one of the reasons that this common drain finds application. We can calculate the closed circuit gain A sub V by looking here at the output. A sub V, of course, is equal to V out over V in with the load resistance present. And we can see here that we've got V in is dropped across these series combinations. So V out then is just the voltage divider, um, we, not equal to. We got um, we've got V in then. Let's let's start over. V out is equal to V in times R sub L over R sub L plus one over G sub M. So we can now form A sub V is just equal to V out over V in, which is equal to this R sub L over R sub L plus 1 over G sub M. We can use this form to calculate the 
open circuit gain, A V0, which is of course the output V out over V in when R sub L equals infinity, or in other words, there's no load resistance connected. So coming over here to the closed circuit gain, R sub L over R sub L plus 1 over G sub M, let R sub L go to infinity, and we get then that AV0, the open circuit gain, is just 1. Thus, the open circuit gain on this amplifier is just unity. It's a unity gain amplifier, but again, because it's got the big input resistance and low output resistance, it's particularly interesting. Now, finally, because of the high input resistance, there is no voltage division at the output, and we can then say that G is equal to A sub V, which we've already determined to be that.